Welcome back to Artistic Lessons. I'm so happy to be back and teaching you again this week about a different artist. So just a little reminder, Artistic Lessons focuses on artists with disabilities. And last week we learned about Henry Matisse and his paper cutouts. This week's artist is Yayo Kusama. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about how to create a Yayo Kusama inspired painting uh, with this mushroom piece right here. So stay tuned and let's get started with the lesson. Japanese contemporary artist Yayo Kusama was born in 1929. She is best known for her vibrant art style with bright colors and repetitive patterns. Her desire to become an artist began at the age of 10 when she began drawing and painting portraits and patterns from nature. From a young age, she suffered from hallucinations where objects and spaces would turn into dots and completely overtake her vision. She drew these visions, but the disapproval from traditional Japanese artists and her parents led her to move to New York City at the age of 28 in 1957 to pursue her passion for art. She painted every day, sometimes starting on a canvas and other times filling an entire room. From paintings and sculptures to performances and installation pieces, her dots were a way for her to think about infinity. Everything, including the clothing she wore and continues to wear today, would be covered in dots to make herself feel as part of the bigger universe and surround herself in every way with her hallucinations. She would create environments of dots with her Infinity Room series, which are mirrored rooms with colored LED lights that leave the viewer with the impression that they are in an endless space. This art style is associated with the optical art movement, op art for short. Optical is used to describe how we see things, such as optical illusions, that are created with the use of certain colors, patterns, and materials. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about Yayo Kusama's vibrant and abstract painting style. Abstract art is art that does not represent visual reality by using different psychedelic forms, colors, and shapes. Psychedelic means to cause hallucinations or visions. She uses this painting style in a series where she paints pumpkins, flowers, and mushrooms, which is what we are going to be learning about in today's project. Let's take a closer look at this painting. From what we've learned so far, we can tell that polka dots are the dominant pattern that Kusama is attracted to. But, as we look at the painting, we can also see ring shapes and circle patterns. And also, a geometric pattern in the bottom mushroom. Let's keep these patterns in mind as we start our own artwork. Let's look at the background now. We can see there is a consistent netting of geometric shapes that is fully covering the background to keep with the theme of patterns. Now that we know a little more about Yayo Kusama and her art style, let's get started with today's project. For this project, you will need some paper. I use two pieces of white paper and a piece of orange paper for our background, but you can use whatever colors you have on hand. We also need some glue, scissors, a pencil, black marker, and some crayons. I used oil pastels in my artwork, but you can use crayons or even paint in yours. Let's start off with the mushroom stumps. We're going to be drawing organic shapes that vary in size. We want some that are large and rectangular and others that are more organically shaped. The bigger our range, the more we will have to work with later on. Moving on to the mushroom heads, I find these shapes very similar to hats. We have pointed hats, curvy hats, or even hats that slope down. When you're drawing your mushroom heads, don't forget to also draw the underbelly of the mushroom head. This addition gives the illusion of dimension in our artwork. Think about how many mushroom heads and mushroom stumps you are drawing. We want to have an equal amount of both. Once you have completed your mushroom sketches, it's time to get our colors out. I started by coloring one of my mushroom stumps with purple. 
With my colors, I tried to range in both light and dark colors for both mushroom heads and stumps. I think this creates great contrast. This part can get messy, but don't worry if you're going out of your lines. We're going to be cutting these out later. Now taking our black marker, we are going to start outlining our shapes. This will give us a guideline when we start cutting and also make the mushrooms stand out when we put them against our colored background. We just want to slowly go around and line all our shapes. And don't forget about the underbelly of the mushroom heads. We want those outlined as well. Let's speed things up a little. It looks so much neater already, so bold and vibrant. So the next step, we're going to start by cutting out our pieces. My trick for cutting easily is to move the paper around instead of really moving your scissors. So just hold your scissors still and twist and turn the paper as necessary and try to get as close of a cut as possible because we don't want any of those white parts peeking out when we paste this onto our colored paper. The black lines should be a good guide for that. Let's lay out our pieces and see what we have to work with. Since I chose to have 5 mushrooms, I have 5 heads and 5 stumps. But depending on how many you choose will determine how your arrangement will look. I think this is really the fun part where you get to kind of make this puzzle however you want it to look by arranging and rearranging your shapes. Think about whether you want your mushroom heads to be in the front or if you want the stump to be in the front. Which color combinations will you put together and which arrangements on the paper will your mushrooms be in? This is your time to really look at your shapes and think about the possibilities you can have. After you decide on an arrangement that you like, you can now paste them down with some glue. Once you have your shapes pasted down, now it's time to decorate our artwork with some patterns. As we learned before, Yayo Kusama's artworks are known for having polka dots, but these are not the only shapes she worked with. She also included rings and stripes of different shapes and colors. Play around and see which patterns you want to draw on your mushrooms. We also want to think about how you're putting your patterns on the mushrooms. We want to give the illusion of dimension, as if the middle of the mushroom is closer to us than the rest of it. So I'm starting off with some bigger dots in the middle of my stump and making them smaller as I go to the edges. Play with these illusions in your other patterns as well, going from small to big and big to small. See what you can come up with. Once you've completed drawing your patterns and all your mushroom heads, stumps, and the underbelly of the mushroom heads are covered in patterns, now it's time to move on to our background. Starting off in one corner of the paper, we're going to draw a spiderweb-like net pattern with geometric shapes. This can be anything from triangles and squares to diamond shapes and trapezoids. They don't have to be perfect, we just want to create a continuous net from one corner of the paper to the other. Once you have your entire background completely covered, you are done with your artwork. You now have a Yayo Kusama inspired artwork that looks amazing. Great job, artist! If you enjoyed this project, you can make it again using different objects and shapes you find around you. I recreated this project using Parakli. I used the same web pattern in the background and polka dots and stripes on my broccoli, but instead of having five like I did with my mushrooms, 
I have just one big broccoli in the middle. This project is so much fun and can be done with so many different objects. I encourage you to look back in the video and look at your own spaces and think about how you would recreate this project if you had to choose another object. And that's it, artists! You have now completed your Yayo Kusama inspired art piece. So this beautiful mushroom piece and we also have a broccoli piece. Uh, I encourage you to try this project however many times you would like. You can do it with almost any object that you can find and you can just see how many different patterns we use to really emulate Yayo Kusama's art style. So thank you for watching and tune in next week for our next lesson. Thank you.